Uh, it's fair to say you've done very, very well for the first few meetings we've had. Well, good afternoon, councillors, and uh, thank you for attending the 28th of May uh, council meeting. Uh, I would invite uh, Paul to uh, open the meeting with the Karakia. Kia noi tato, ki horo te marano, ki a faka papa pona mo te boana, hei hura hai ma tato i tarangi nei aroha atu aroha mai. Tato ya tato kato tuturu mo tuturu fakamawa ke tina homi e hui e taiki. Move on to item two on the agenda, which is the apologies, and I have a, an apology from Councillor Hartshorn today. Uh, are there any other apologies? Thank you. I'd invite a councillor to uh, move that the apology be be uh, received and confirmed. Uh, Councillor Ryan and Councillor Cogan. Those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Move on to item three on the agenda, which is the declarations of interest. Uh, they have all been distributed to councillors via uh, team systems. Uh, if there's any council that wishes to make a, a late amendment, if they could advise the meeting now in relation to conflict or a potential conflict and remember that uh, uh, being cautious is a good thing. Thank you. Move on to item four on the agenda. Uh, are there any urgent items that should be on the agenda that are not? Thank you, councillors. Uh, we'll now move on to item five on the agenda, which is the minutes of the uh, fourth of the fifth extraordinary council meeting. Now, these minutes have been circulated previously to all councillors. There's been no request for any changes or amendments, uh, but before we move to uh, uh, voting on them, uh, is there anyone that has a anything they wish to raise in relation to correctness? No. I'd invite a councillor to move that the minutes are a true and correct record. Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder? Councillor Cogan, thank you. Those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Move on to the minutes of the 23rd of April, ordinary meeting of council. Once again, they have been forwarded to councillors for comment. Uh, there's been no request for amendments. Uh, and on that basis, I would invite a, a councillor to move that they're a true and accurate record. Happy to move, Your Worship. Deputy Mayor Carruthers and Councillor Martin. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Move on to uh, action, uh, item number six on the agenda today, and that's the action list. And you can find that on pages five and six of your agenda. And I'll, I'll invite the chief executive to run us through the, act, the uh, current action list. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, good afternoon, councillors. I'll run you through item by item in the action list and give you an update. A Canary School, um, Cycleway student cycleway trail. Um, we have a solution in terms of the road crossing for Canary Road. Um, that process is now uh, going through pricing, and we should see that progressing um, in the next few months. 
Uh, that will also include now some upgrades to the footpaths as well going to the school. Uh, speed limits. Um, this process uh, was intended to start in May, but has obviously been impacted by COVID. We're looking to get that consultation process underway uh, in the next few months. Still working on a consultation document to go with that process. We do have a list of roads that have been identified previously and speed limit proposed changes, and we will um, get that circulated um, to councillors pre free decision around a consultation. Transfer of pension and housing to Destination Westland. Um, once again, this there was a, uh, a proposal put to the DW board from a, a consultant in terms of uh, uh, scope of works. Um, further, um, the board seeking further uh, consultation in terms of other potential parties that could do that work. So in the discussion with the CE, uh, that she's looking to follow through with getting that advice to other potential consultants. Uh, in terms of the Erie and Runanga partnership um, agreement, I can confirm today that both parties have now signed, so the document is now fully active and fully um, uh, agreed. Care Square, um, this is obviously tied in with the work around the future planning of the race course. That work is still ongoing. Um, the intention of that work is to lead into a, a scope of work for the long-term plan consultation process. And uh, I suppose the medium for um, updating council will be via the Parks and Reserves Subcommittee. Um, we'll talk about that next week at the um, Community Development Committee Mm -hmm. uh, Civil Defence and Community Development Project. I can confirm now that the sale and purchase uh, criteria agreement, um, the conditions have been met. So that process is now completed, which is fantastic. Um, that um, will allow funds to be utilised from that reserve fund. And we have one report in today's meeting that um, it's the first one to actually apply for that. Uh, Carnegie Building Project is reported in the um, 12th of May at the Capital Projects and Tenders Committee. Uh, the report there requested it maintain on hold until we found the outcomes of our funding applications. Uh, that's the current status. And to date, we have had no update in terms of any application. But hopefully, uh, the decisions are imminent. Uh, Fox Landfall, um, discussion still going on with Golders in terms of the final outcomes of that report. Um, and uh, that is still, is still live and getting, it's, it's still in draft form. So we're still working through that with the relevant parties. Our Marks Road Reserve, uh, that has been withdrawn, so that should be off. That was removed from last month. Uh, an area representation around the council table, obviously um, we've had feedback from the Department of Internal Affairs on this subject and I, don't, I understand that we had further discussion at the last council meeting but no further action has been completed on this to date. Happy to take any questions. Thanks, uh, thanks Simon. Uh, well, it's comprehensive and we're, uh, it's good to see, um, for instance, the, uh, the agreement with um, Macapio signed and sealed. It's, it's a shame we couldn't get to Bruce Bay, but COVID-19 got in the way and uh, however, signed, sealed and locked for the future. Uh, I'd like to open the, uh, the matter for discussion now. And if I could start with uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. No, I have no further questions. Thanks for the update, Simon. Appreciate it. <coughs> Councillor Davidson. No, no, uh, no further questions, so good report. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, no questions on the action list. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Deputy Mayor Carruthers. Nothing further. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Cogan. Uh, no, thank you, Your Worship. Simon, thank you. You actually answered my questions um, in your presentation. Councillor Hart. No further questions from me. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Neil. 
No, no further questions. Thank you. Good to see progress in some of those um, areas. We look forward to progress in the other ones, especially the speed one. Thank you. And uh, Francois? No, no, nothing from me. Thank you, Simon. And Paul? Thank you, Worship. Uh, just a comment on the, um, the Manitou uh, Fukutainga um, signed today. So, um, so Ngāti Mahaki are happy to be um, to have signed that and be part of that um, partnership with the council. And um, uh, so just to record our appreciation for the opportunity to um, sit at the table, we bring um, a different perspective to the council table. Um, won't always agree, but uh, we bring another perspective. Plus also, of course, um, Potani Ngai Tahu are, are and uh, will be increasingly in the future, um, bigger players in the Westland economy. So it makes sense for us to be here. So thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, I have one matter I'd like to raise, which was raised by Sergeant Glue, um, and that is the concern that police have about the speed limit between the outside of Hokitika through to the Glowworm Dwell. And uh, I'd ask the Chief Executive to uh, raise that with staff. Um, they would like to see, the police would like to see uh, the speed limit moved out. I know it's NZTA, but they would like to see the speed limit moved out of town uh, because their view is that uh, there's a danger to people. And um, so I'd, I'd raise that and, and just ask the Chief Executive to follow it up at some stage. Yeah. Can I just respond to that, Your Worship? So I have raised it with staff and it has been raised numerous times with NZTA. Um, not only um, the north side of town, but the south side of town as well, in terms of the bridge, moving the 50k across to the other side of the bridge. Um, so there are a number of um, proposals within uh, the speed limit control. Most of them talk about local roads, uh, but we have a, also another list that we've been working with NGTA on in the past. I, we do have um, Pete Connors from NGTA um, invited to come to the June Council meeting, so I think this is a subject we can actually get him to, to answer because it is quite frustrating getting changes to speed limits on the main highway. Thanks, uh, Simon. And so could you give uh, Pete Connors a heads up that yep. that will be raised? Thank you very much. Simon, so you're, Simon, you're just a wee bit hard to hear on the um, audio I'm finding. Thanks. Uh, How is that, David? Is that better? Yeah. Out clear, Simon. Thank you. Um, I'd invite a councillor to uh, move a resolution that the updated action list be received and that the uh, Marks Road Reserve be removed from the action list. Uh, do I have a mover? I'm happy to move. Councillor Kogan has moved and Deputy Mayor Carruthers has second. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you, councillors. Move on to item seven on the agenda. And the first item there is the Chief Executive's quarterly report. Now, councillors, you'll find that on page seven to 21 of your agenda. And I'll hand that over to the Chief Executive to run us through. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there are a number of items within this report and I, I'll try to make it as comprehensive as possible, particularly in giving you a very the, uh, high level view of where we're at with most of our project work. Um, and I just will want to run through it and I won't go through every item, but the ones that are of significance. Um, COVID-19 response, obviously we're not the only area in New Zealand impacted, it's a national and a worldwide um, pandemic. Um, but I believe our response and our the ability for the council to maintain uh, most of its services through the last eight to 10 weeks uh, have been very well done. And I, I applaud the work our IT team has done to enable us to work remotely. The only thing we actually dropped during this um, stage four uh, was to do with limbs. Everything else was still provided remotely. 
Um, and this leads to a way of us thinking about how we act to actually work um, post a COVID situation. And it's been endorsed by the executive team that we will provide a lot of flexible working arrangements for car staff, particularly the ability to work remotely um, and provide, I suppose, a wellness approach to the business. So um, this provides us the flexibility to be able to do everything we can from a remote location. So we'll work towards that and um, include it in future discussions with staff and contracts. Um, in terms of the various stages, um, Tiara Cook and uh, our, um, I suppose the whole civil defence team have been very focused on welfare and have been leading, um, supporting uh, all the welfare uh, impacts of COVID. It's fair to say that um, we're only at the very first stage of this and, and we do expect a lot of hardship through the whole district um, for the months and potentially years to come. So I'm um, just very conscious of that. Um, we're still working through the Westland race course, um, uh, future planning. Um, we have already come close to finalising the lease agreement with the RDA, uh, which is a, a good step forward for them to be able to access that fund and get this, the, um, their facility built. So I'm um, pleased uh, we're almost there for that. Um, during this last quarter, we also signed off and finalised the uh, Franz Joseph Waste Retrieval Plant. And I know it's been a long, drawn-out project, um, but we've finally got there and it's ex um, performing extremely well, um, according to uh, my team, um, particularly the uh, infiltration process where um, it's, it's basically um, performing above expectations. The Fox uh, water treatment plant. We have now got the final scope of the of the um, of the tender um, uh, technical spec defined, and that is going back out to the original tenderers for rescoping, and hopefully we can get that tendered in the near future. Arahua water supply uh, finally got easements um, arranged with relevant parties, so. Um, that, that process is very well in hand and uh, we expect again to go out for tender in the near future for that. So I'm uh, pleased that two big water projects um, will be, I suppose, um, contracted in the very near future. We've got uh, quite a few uh, TIF funding applications and we're actually seeing a lot of them being completed now, which is really good. Haas toilets have been completed. Ross Water and Kamara toilets have been completed. Uh, still a bit, little bit of work going on in Kamara with um, a ceiling, which has just been finished over the last week, ceiling the uh, um, reserves car park. Um, Haas storage, uh, that process, as you can see from the photo in the, in the report, is underway. It got delayed due to COVID, so that project is now um, progressing. Uh, still uh, in the design and phases around the camper van dump stations, both in Hokutika and Franz Joseph, but that project is um, starting shortly. Um, we did quite a bit of work with the, uh, obviously the, the um, West Coast Wilderness Trail enhancements, Lake Canary stage one and two, uh, zone one and two have been completed. Zone three, we are finalizing the final stages of the, the route for that, and that should be uh, completed uh, I think we've got to the end of August to have that completed. We've done a bit of remedial work from the December floods, uh, particularly up at Milltown Cowboy Paradise, an excellent outcome for that. And we have been fully funded for that, which is fantastic. That fund has come through from MB. Um, I've talked about Carnegie, so that process is, is um, to be defined post uh, additional funding. Those that have been down to the beachfront in the, re in the near recent, few, um, recent times would have seen the north part of the beachfront. The grass is taken and the mounds are looking quite, quite exceptional. Uh, and we've started to work now on um, the, the southern end of the beachfront. And Sunset Point, um, following this weekend, the major works start down at Sunset Point with West Roads as well. So still on target for have that completed by end of August. 
Um, and that's primarily, oh, primarily the, the works as of priority. Um, you've got um, updates from other departments in the report, and I'll take them as a as um, read. Just one one other point, I suppose the Franz Joseph master planning work um, that's progressing nicely, um, still on track. Um, there have been delays, and obviously the consultation process due to COVID, but we can pick that up quite quickly and get that moving again. So happy to take any questions, Your Worship. Thanks, uh, thanks, Simon. I, I think first of all, I, I think councillors, um, you'll join me in congratulating staff on um, having kept the business running very smoothly in what were quite unique times, and uh, I'm I'm delighted. The business has clearly been in good hands, and while we were at home cutting wood and mowing lawns and doing lots of repairs, um, it uh, the team just just did a great job. Uh, I'll open the report up and very comprehensive, open for discussion. And let's uh, let's start with uh, 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 Councillor uh, Martin. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, very comprehensive report. Thank you, Simon. I um, always try and ask my questions prior to the meeting if I have any. So um, no, thank you. I just maybe pick up on one point around these kiosks, and this is really detailed now. But wayfinding kiosks, just update. It's under Hokitika Beachfront. What is that? The C are they the CBD wayfinders or yes? Oh, okay, so it's just so they're yeah. um, actually getting um, developed now. In front of the first development, they're actually getting constructed right now. That's very exciting. Yeah, well done, Councillor Davidson. Um, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, just a couple of um, items. Uh, Simon is two uh, point two. Um, that's the. Um, race course. Oh, look, I don't want to uh, impede any, um, any work that um, um, RDA are doing for their, for their release, but um, I, my question is, have we got a blueprint um, for the master plan? And if, and if we have, how does um, RDA at least fit in with this? So uh, the blueprint for the master plan um, has yet to be developed. But the, the original agreement with the race course uh, committee was that the RDA was already locked and loaded. And so we're, so the land that's down the bottom of that property has been earmarked for the RDA and um, we weren't going to um, mess around with that. Thank you. The, um, there, there is, we have been in discussions with the firewood operator in that area as well. He's agreed that he will be vacating that area by hopefully by the 1st of September. Um, that needs to be cleaned up, and that's still an area of um, opportunity for council. Thank you. And the other item was uh, 2.9 in the cycle trail. <coughs> in terms of the, um, the remedial work and the maintenance work, um, I understand there was funding um, approved for that in Barnwell. How, how much was that? Oh, I think it was about $130,000 we applied for and have been uh, re repaid. So there's no rate uh, money. No, nothing's no. gone into that. Thank you. Um, there is there is an area of uh, improvement in terms about the way we access that fund. Um, unfortunately, we don't get funded until after we've done the work. Um, what I'm trying to work with with uh, MB is getting at least 50% of that fund up front so that we can start the work, um, so that we don't have to use council funds. Um, but that's that's still work in progress. Thank you. Uh, Francois. Uh, no, it's all uh, comfortable. Thank you, Simon. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, yeah, just a couple of things. So 2.13, the roading activities, uh, you say the annual reseal program. I'm just wondering if we can make the long-term reseal program publicly available so the public know when to expect their road resealed. Um, also, just in terms of road maintenance, um, I'd also like that publicly available so people know when their roads are going to be maintained. And I'm talking about the high shoulders, drains, culverts, spraying program, etc. 
Um, it's a bit of a safety issue and an important part of owning a road. Um, I mean, an example is if you go down the Water Eye Flat Road in a deluge, there's water everywhere. It's I'm not too sure. But as long as people know when they're going to get those works done, um, it will make it a bit more accountable. Um, also, uh, just on the Haas Jacksons Bay Road, um, just north of Okuru, there's a bit of a safety issue there where the river's cutting in. Um, on the Fox landfill, um, it's kind of been a year of talk and, and no action. The landfills has to be removed and a plan for all of the landfills, all of these legacy landfills that are at risk. It needs to happen, you know, we can't be here in another year and it's washed away. Um, and then just final, 5.1, the um, official information request, there's 10 requests that are 20 days and over, and I'd just like to know why. And also there's three requests that are pending, and what does pending mean? If you could answer so pending that. is work in progress. So the 20 days, we can provide more detail uh, on in that uh, to councillors. No, that's fine. That's um, that's from me. Yeah, I just thank you. Just uh, just a comment on the Fox landfill. Um, councillors will be aware that we have a an application in for shovel ready projects to actually do exactly what uh, is to remove all of that landfill and relocate it. Um, it's it hasn't been removed yet. We are waiting for an update from the shovel ready projects, I suppose, group. Um, the Golder report plays a big part of, of that uh, outcome. And so we're still working to define that final report because uh, that will make, I suppose, give the, the ministry uh, the confidence that we are doing the right thing. So that, that is quite a, a, a critical piece of uh, information that the ministry needs to decide on how to resolve it. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Um, yeah. uh, Deputy Mayor Carruthers. Just to follow up um, your comments at the outset, Simon, about um, uh, and the go forward um, operating on flexible hours and so on, um, I, I think that's a, a desirable thing to be, a, a des desirable goal. And what interests me is um, bearing in mind the likelihood of a, a major earthquake here uh, and our building being unavailable for a long period of time, that staff are able uh, and are used to working um, away from the building. And I'd like to see us sort of moving towards like a plan B um, in that eventuality, which one day is likely to be an actuality. Is that something yeah. that's that, that's something that, that we can look, sort of work towards? Uh, definitely, and we've already raised it. And so a lot of our, I suppose, IT hardware is, is in situ. So we want to make every new replacement actually a portable device so that people can, like I say, pick it up and actually relocate to, a, to their home or to a, another area. So that's a program we're working with our... Um, IT team with now, so we've already made that call as an executive team. But with with the mainframe computer and so on being in the building, um, and how how how, did, how how does that work? If, if, for example, the building was destroyed and was not accessible, I'll let Leslie ask answer that. Through, through the chair, we have virtual servers which are off site. So we have some over in Christchurch and also in the cloud. Couldn't actually hear that, Simon. Could you just interpret what she said? Yeah. So we do have virtual servers in the cloud and we also have some backup um, servers in Christchurch. So that's part, all, all of this um, compute, computer equipment and servers, it's all part of our disaster recovery plan and business continuity, which is, um, we have plans, but we're also updating them at the moment. So it's an ongoing process. 
That's encouraging to hear. Thank, thank you, Leslie. That's good. Thank you, Simon. Councillor Kogan. Yes, thanks, Simon. Actually, um, not only was the report very comprehensive, but the visual um, pictures that you put into there as well were actually really beneficial to be able to get a bigger picture around what's actually being done and where. So thanks very much for that. Um, actually, it's interesting, I, I and I fully support uh, Councillor Carruthers' comments there around with COVID. I mean, it's taught us all many things and one of them is to be a little bit more self-sufficient around working remotely so um, and, and as we progress along you know, I think we've already made some considerable, ga considerable gains even in the last few weeks um, and the reality is whether it be an earthquake where, whether it could be any other natural disaster um, knowing that we can still fully function remotely is going to be most important to, to many businesses, including the council. Um, and the only other thing, which isn't really a question, is just around under the strategy and communications. And I guess that's just around encouraging the public to ensure, you know, that they have up until the, I think it's the 7th of June, to put submissions in um, for our annual plan. Um, I know everybody's been busy and other things have been on their mind, but just so that they know it's vital that they, you know, have their saying. No, it's really Your Worship. Just another comment that I should have identified. We're trying to go as paperless as possible as well. It's another big step in terms of our software and our IT systems. Oh. Um, the, the planning team have already decided to go paperless in terms of no hard copies for resource consent process. So the other big part of it is to catch up on all our property files and get them digitised. So we're starting to get that process underway as well. So to get in, to be as, um, I suppose, uh, no hard copies of, of information where it's all actually captured electronically enables us to be able to work remotely. That's a yes. big job. Mm. <laughs> Councillor Hart. Thanks, Simon. It yeah, definitely was a very comprehensive report and a lot of detail, but um, no, I have no further questions. Uh, Councillor Neil. Um, no, thank you again, Simon. And just to guess a comment on the staffing, it will be sad to see Dominique go. And yeah. thank you for all of us, I'm sure, for the work that she has put in. Um, be good to see exit interviews of any staff that are leaving being done so that we know if there's something we can do to hold them here for longer. Um, other than that, all good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, on a more mundane matter, 2.13, um, the, the uh, tar ceiling, at, or the or chip ceiling of the footpath, Canary, from the school to the pub, yep. is there an opportunity to um, tie that in with the kiosk? information chaos, the, the heritage oh, panel. Yeah. Help with the district assets team. Um, I'm not sure the total scope of that work, um, but we are going to have to bring it down that side and across the road. So exactly that location, we'll, we'll look at that. The heritage panels are very close to being finalised and so it just be, might be an opportunity to tidy it all up at once. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you for that. Thanks, Paul. Look, uh, Simon, good comprehensive report. I'd ask uh, Councillor uh, Kennedy to liaise with staff in relation to the uh, bridge at, on the Harstead Jackson Road, so that uh, staff, you know, if you can liaise directly with them to let them know what you're talking about. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I will do. Thank you. Okay. And um, uh, Simon, is there an opportunity to work with uh, MSD, who have been really proactive? Uh, and maybe look at accelerating the the process of uh, digi digitising uh, documents. I just leave it open. I think there's an opportunity there. We've got a number of very very good people who are becoming unemployed who could be um, who could be uh, used to the advantage of all ratepayers during this uh, period over the next year or two. Um, I would invite uh, councillor to. Um, Resolve that the quarterly report from the Chief Executive dated the 28th of May 2020 
be received. Happy to do that. Okay, Councillor Neil, Deputy Mayor Carruthers, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Move on to the next uh, report, which is the financial report for April 2020. It's on pages 22 to 36 of your agenda and Group Services Manager, Leslie, will take us through it. Thanks, uh, Leslie. Good afternoon, councillors, your worship. Um, the month, the uh, financial report to the end of April, I uh, will take the report as read and um, through the chair, I'll answer any questions. Could I first of all ask uh, councillors on Zoom, can you hear the, can you hear Leslie? Can do. Thank you very no, it's, much. It's not great, though. I'll speak up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Leslie. Um, uh, we'll take the uh, report as read and we'll move around the table. Uh, Councillor Martin. No, thank you for the report. And I'm sure the you know, Audit and Risk Committee also um, went to the detail at the previous meeting in relation to the quarterly report. So. Um, I, I think it's the next month's report will be interesting to see, I think, as we get towards the end of the financial mm -hmm. year and how we're tracking, and particularly going into next year with that, with that Capital Works project, program, will be very much of interest to councillors, I think, <coughs> and, and ratepayers. But thank you very much for the report, Leslie, and John, who I guess yeah. can't, be, um, can't be here. <laughs> Councillor Davidson. Um, just on the capital uh, expenditure, um, I just noticed there's, uh, there's some delays in some of the uh, projects there. Um, is there. What's the main reason for those um, delays? Uh, Truth is worship, I'd uh, like to ask um, the group manager of district assets to respond to that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, through the change. Um, the, um, your worship, uh, the delay in the capital projects are mainly due to um, cap, um, either equipment delivery delays, and there has been um, some changes in scope of works, and then also there's been a requirement for us to um, delay the works purely based on um, the Serviceability of the contracts at, at the given point in time. So um, I can provide a report on those to council if required. Thanks, Louis. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just, um, <clears throat> I'm just at the end of the day, would um, are there any going to be any rate payers that will be affected with the, uh, the delays of any of these projects? Um, the answer to that question is uh, probably the um, uh, only project that I could um, jump to mind is probably the uh, water meter installations um, that's been delayed due to the COVID situation. So that was again a supplier um, hold up with supply, and uh, yeah, that's the only one I'm looking to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Francois. All good at my end, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Um, yeah, just a, a question on, um, so page 36, the very bottom, the total capital expenditure, um, and there's a $10 million discrepancy there. What is between the actual spent and uh, the full year plan? Can, that be, can you explain that to me? I think it's because it's a summarised report, so the actual um, totals that are, are at the bottom are the totals of capital expenditure and projects and budget, but the actual items in the list are summarised. So some of the very small ones probably aren't included in there. Yeah, that's cool. But these capital projects, are they to be, were they to be loan funded? Is that correct? Not all of them. Some of them will be renewals. 
um, which is depreciation funded. Okay. Um, but the rest of them will be uh, loan funded. Okay, and because we're at the max kind of maximum of our borrowing, is one of the reasons that some of these weren't done because we can't borrow anymore? We are nowhere near to our debt limit, so I'm not sure where you, you, you got that from, but we're nowhere near our debt limits. Oh, okay, apologies. Um, potentially, if we really wanted to go all the way, which I wouldn't recommend, we could... Um, potentially have at this moment in time, because it's based on our covenants, 40 million. Right. So we're, we're not even at half, really. Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you very much, Leslie. Deputy Mayor Carruthers. Well, I just love seeing the report where the revenues are 10% up, the expenditures about 10% down, and uh, there's a, a surplus in excess of a million dollars. That's fantastic. Um, but as uh, Councillor Martin said maybe next report will be more more sober. But uh, no, nothing further. Leslie, good report. Much appreciated. Councillor Cogan. No, Leslie, I don't have any questions other than to thank you and your team for a great job as usual. I, I know the last few weeks, particularly in preparation for a lot of the annual plan stuff as well, you guys have been working extremely hard. So, no, great work. Councillor Hart. Um, thanks, Leslie. I just have um, a question. I'm assuming that the cash and cash equivalents increases the million dollars that we of cash flow funding. Yeah, so yeah. I've got some notes on that. Um, the one million, there will be one million repaid today, which is the short term funding. So a million of that is going out today. But since that report was written, we've actually paid our creditors for the month and that was around about 1.9 million so that that actual cash balance will be less than that so significantly less however we're at the quarterly rates um payments due this week and um, we've actually had quite a bit of revenue coming in from our rates a little more than was expected uh, it looks like we've been quite private finance have been quite prudent in their forecasts of the revenue, um, but we've had a little bit more coming in than we expected. So for the moment, it's okay. Okay, that was sort of my next question: was the substantial increase in creditors from what um, from March to April? Is yeah. that just? Yeah, um, it was just, it's literally just timing. Timing. Right, those invoices in and into the system and ready for payments. Okay. No, that's all. Thank you, Leslie. Councillor Neil. Uh, no further questions. Thank you to Leslie and John for that. That's a good report. Um, thank you, Worship. The, um, can I ask what measures um, are being taken? towards um, relief for uh, ratepayers in the, you know, the post-COVID environment. And some of the some of the motelliers are, will be fi finding financial distress um, and not only the motelliers, but, uh, but those that are connected with tourism in particular will be, you know, they've got uh, mortgage lease mm -hmm. repayments and then rates on top, so. Yeah, well, again, um... Um, it's been well publicised and it's it's all over our, uh, our uh, website um, as to what that relief is. But you have to remember as well that council has been informed by government that we have to ensure that we meet our financial obligations. So obviously we're not in a situation we can just give money away. Um, so what we are doing, we're looking at a, a zero rates increase, as you're aware. And also we are looking at how we can make payment plans to, um, so that people don't have to pay up by the, when they would normally be expected to pay. So we are actually lengthening out that period that they can pay their rates. Yeah, good. So, so there's some- Oh yes, there was some absolutely, vision. yes. That's good. Okay. Thanks, uh, Leslie. I, I think uh, Deputy Mayor Carruthers uh, summed it up in a nutshell. Revenue up 10%, expenses down 
at the present time, a million dollars surplus, which will probably disappear by 30th of uh, June. And, and a big thank you to all of our ratepayers who have been paying their rates. And, and I know that some can't, and we have mechanisms in place to assist, and those that can are doing so, and it's, it's just great to see. Um, I'd like to uh, request the councillor to resolve that the, uh, we receive the financial performance report to the 30th of April, 2020. Yep. Councillor Davidson, Councillor Hart, those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you, councillors. The next, uh, the next item is a request for council to become a guarantor council with LGFA. And the background information on that is on pages 37 to 45. And I'll hand over to Crip Services uh, Manager uh, Leslie, and uh, if you could run us through it. Thank you, Leadership. Uh, I'll take questions through the chair uh, on this, but I just have to update you. Uh, as you're all aware that the local government funding agency was set up uh, for local authorities to be able to get preferential rates for their, their loan funding, um, which means that the loans that we have at the moment with them have, um, we're paying less costs of capital on those loans than we would do with a normal bank. Uh, with the local government funding agency, once you reach 20 million in debt, you have to become a guarantor council, uh, otherwise you can't go over that 20 million. Um, the consequences of that are that we can, we can obtain bank funding, that's not a problem, uh, it's just that it would cost us more. Now, since this report was written and um, this meeting, I've received an update on the uh, cost of capital for a guarantor council, and there's actually a 10 base, um, base point uh, reduction in what we were paying, we will be paying for our loans if we become a guarantor council. So there's a big saving to be made on 20 million um, by becoming a guarantor council. Thanks, uh, Leslie. Um, we'll take the report as, as read and uh, we'll head around the other way. Uh, uh, Paul. Uh, thank you. The um, um, so I understand there are benefits from it. Are there any, any uh, negatives? So the, we have to obviously talk about the fact that being a guarantor could potentially um, put Westland in a position of a liability if another council were to default. Mm. However, uh, that has never happened and central government obviously don't want that to ever happen. And there are other mechanisms in place that the LGFA can go down before they actually have to go down um, getting a, a call on other councils to meet that debt. Um, it's prorated by your rating base. So whatever debt is out there, it will be prorated based on that, our rating database yeah. and the other council, the other guarantor councils that rating databases as well. So for us, it will be a it'll be very little. Thank you. Just one other was through worship. The um, what? What are the other West Coast councils in position? Um, well, they are looking to become one. Or the, the last time I spoke to them, we were doing. I mean, that may have changed. I don't know. Um, Gray, I don't know. I haven't I haven't spoken to them about it. Um, regional council have only just joined, and they have very low debt because of them being a regional council. They don't hold many assets. But there are there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, councils are guarantor councils. Right. It's an extremely low risk, but it has to be pointed out. Councillor Neil. Sorry, was that me? It was a bit hard to hear then. Um, yeah, we've had extensive presentations on this when we first went with the LGFA. Anyway, and I'm, I'm very happy to go with this request. Thanks, Leslie, for the work on it. Thank you. Councillor Hart. Uh, thanks, Leslie. Yeah, I fully support becoming a guarantor council in order to um, gain us benefits by, by lower pricing and keeping our finance costs low. So, yeah, good, good.
good work. Councillor Cogan. No, I'm fully supportive as well, Leslie, of going ahead um, with your request for, for guarantor. I think um, particularly with the recent events of COVID um, and the fact that we have worked really hard to get that zero rate increase over the next 12 months, the, the one thing as a council I don't would not like to see moving forward is that we go backwards rather than, you know, continue to go forwards. And I think by doing this, it's just going to give us that extra little bit of assistance and security. The uh, risks are virtually non-existent. The advantages are significant. It's an absolute no-brainer. Totally support it. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Worship. Just one quick question, uh, if I may, Leslie. How much uh, money could the council borrow through LGFA if it were a guarantor? Do you know that? I'm sorry, Councillor Kennedy. I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry. How much money could the council borrow through LGFA if it were a guarantor? We can borrow up to, for, up to our covenants, and at the moment that's around about $40 million. Oh, thank you. Councillor Davidson. Yeah, sounds good. Little risk and uh, great benefits. Good one. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through the Chair, um, Leslie, thank you for the report and I understand all the background information associated with it. Just a question in terms of assumptions for this year's annual plan. Did we make an assumption based on joining the LGFA or, um, uh, sorry, becoming a guarantor of the LGFA or um, status quo in terms of our um, forecasting for our budget? Yeah, so as regarding as forecasting for the budget, um, we based that on um, not being a guarantor. However, with going down the zero rate route, it's not really linked to our budget. The rates are not linked to our budget. So effectively, it's not really going to have an effect on that. On the rates, yeah. On the rates. Um, but you could say that we may have to rely, because we're going down a zero rate path, we could have to rely on short-term funding at times during the year, which, Obviously, there's cost to, um, but the more obviously your loan goes up, the more your cost will go up, but it does not go up. Okay. Yeah, no, that answers the question. Thank you. Usually, uh, um, roughly, what's uh, our borrowing cost going to be, uh, our, our interest rate? Uh, well, it's base rate plus um, a margin, um, but the margin is very low at the moment. We're, it's one point something we're paying in. You know, it depends what loan it is. Yes. It, just, it depends if it's a shorter term one. Your rate is obviously that bit higher to a longer term one, unless you're quite long, and then it goes up again. So it would be under two percent. Yes. Gosh, that's an amazing borrowing rate, isn't it? Oh. And, and is it is it fair to say the uh, the council's position, uh, the last council was presented to by uh, LGFA and. They were very impressed with the strength of our balance sheet. Nothing's changed in that direction despite COVID? No, nothing's changed in that respect. Well, we do have to keep an eye on our, um, on our balance sheet because as we go along, um, depending on our liquidity, that is what will affect our, what we're able to, to actually borrow. So if we lose liquidity, we, we can't borrow 40 billion or 30 billion. You know, we have to look at that. Well, thank you for that. Um, but if, we've not been, according to um, Solgan, we're not one of the at-risk councils for breaching our covenants. It's good to hear. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me, but it's good to hear. Uh, I'll invite uh, perhaps the appropriate person be uh, Councillor Hart, looking for someone to move that uh, council request staff to start the process to apply to become a guarantor council with a local government funding agency. Yep. Would like someone like to move that? Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder, please? Happy to second. Councillor Neil, are those in favour? Aye. 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 Those against? Thank you very much. That's a significant uh, step forward. It's taken a wee while. It's taken a couple of years now, but uh, well done, Leslie. Really appreciate it. We'll move on to the next. Uh, part of the report, which is the Marks Road Reserve Fund. 
And councillors, that's set out on pages 46 to 48 of your agenda. And I'll hand that to the Chief Executive. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, councillors, this is a report requesting some funds from the Haas, oh, sorry, from Mark's Road Sale um, Reserve Fund. It's funds to complete the Dennis Road track. So they've received additional funding previously from MBI and, and some of the, uh, their own funds. Uh, so they're requesting $22,608.14 to complete the track. Uh, so this is work that's already been done um, and to recover the cost of completing that track. Um, this is, the fund is obviously now available because due to the fact that the sale and purchase agreement terms have been met for the sale of that land. So I'm recommending the council approve that request. Thanks, uh, Simon. Councils will take it as, uh, as read and I'd invite the Southern Councillor, Councillor Kennedy to, uh, do you have any, do you have any uh, questions or comments to kick it off? Oh, no, I think um, obviously that's what the Reserve Fund uh, is set up for um, and happy if the community in Haas are happy with it, which they seem to be, um, I'm happy for those funds to be released, yes. Thank you for that. Councillor Martin. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the question in terms of the, the, the legal status of the reserve, is it, a, is it a restricted reserve? No, it's the community, it's basically for the communities. Um, so we just, benefit. so we haven't gone through the process of making it a restricted reserve no. in our books. It's no. just a reserve, an internal, internally created reserve fund. Oh, yeah. no, thank you very much. I think that's fine. I think the, the wording of the resolution could just um, be involved the word council, I think, and just change a few things around. But other than that, if the community supporter makes sense. Thank you. Councillor Davidson. No, no questions there. Deputy Mayor Carruthers. I know, it's an uh, obvious thing to do. No questions, thanks. Councillor Cogan. No, I actually fully support um, the recommendation for the Haas Group, and it, but it does raise the question with um, me, of course, around, um, because that's significant funding that we can now, which is great for us to be able to allocate to the Haas community. Um, it does make me question too, uh, you know, is there other opportunities around the region in other areas of our community where we do have land that's not restricted reserve um, that we, you know, could be proactive in actually looking at sales like this one um, to be able to provide back to local community groups. Uh, yes, through your worship. Um, we do have a number of land parcels and so do um, Destination Western right through the region. Um, it is some, a piece of work that I'm keen to actually pursue in terms of what is the future of those land parcels because some of it's a sitting idle. Yeah. Um, we need to optimise all of those land parcels to make sure they're actually doing something and having some benefit, not just survivability. So that is a piece of work that I am looking at and working on alongside Destination Westland as well. Yeah, that's, that's really good because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, when we've got communities out there that are, you know, wanting to get on with a number of projects, I mean, we can't always be reliant on TIF funding and PGF funding and council funding. So it's just another, you know, potential revenue stream to help them out. A front line. Yeah, no, nothing to add. I'm um, happy to support the, the, um, the recommended option. Councillor Hart? Um, no, I support the release of the funds for the completion of the track. Um, and, yeah, well done to the house community for, for doing this. And Councillor Neil? Uh, happy to go along with it. Good idea. Thank you. And... Uh, fully support. If this is what the house community want, then we fully support it. Well, councillors, um, the resolution I'm proposing, which uh, I invite someone to um, to move, is that 
the funds be released from Council's Marks Road Reserve Fund, $22,608.14, for the completion of the Dennis Road track project in the Haast community. And I'd, uh, I'd invite Councillor Kennedy to move that. Uh, so moved, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Kennedy. Do I have a second, oh. Deputy Mayor Carruthers. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion's carried. Thank you very much. Move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the long term plan 2021 2031 environmental scan. And it's on pages 49 to 153 of your agenda. And we invite uh, the strategy and communications advisor, Emma, to join us and drive us through. Thanks, Emma. Oh, good afternoon, uh, councillors and mayor and staff. Uh, so this is essentially an administrative good practice exercise for the long-term plan. Um, it provides staff and councillors with background information um, and statistical information about what has happened in the past 10 years is the period of time that we tried to focus on um, and to make some predictions about what may happen in the future based on that data. And then to also draw some conclusions and analysis that we can use towards the assumptions that we put into the long-term plan. And um, through the mayor, I would like to ask if there are any questions on the information. Um, and I take that the report is read. Thanks, uh, Emma. Uh, councillors, we will take the report as read and uh, invite questions. Uh, uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Your Worship. I think um, it's really important and provides a good um, framework for establishing the long-term plan. And I'm sure aspects of this will be relied on you know, as we go forward for the development of the long-term plan. So that, to me, is where you go through them, you know, go through specific points and staff provide recommendations against projects and things. So that's it's a good good body of work to have undertaken. So thank you very much, Emma, for your lead and Lisa, your team. And thank you. Councillor Davis just adopting it. Yeah, it's um, quite, a, uh, quite a big report. I was just uh, wondering uh, what uh, impact COVID-19 has had on the report. I'm sorry, Councillor Davidson. Could you please move closer to the microphone? I couldn't hear you. At all. Oh, yeah, I was just, um, I was just wondering um, what impact COVID nineteen has had on on this report. Um, so this document was written in um, between just November to early February this year. Um, so COVID nineteen at that point was. Uh, not really on um, people's minds. So the analysis and conclusion, some of it may be impacted by what has now happened, particularly around uh, tourism, I should think. Um, so this is something that will have to be taken into consideration by council and staff moving forward. Uh, but the data itself um, will continually be um, looked at um, by different uh, government agencies, particularly statistics, so any further information that comes out um, can be provided. Thank you. Francois? Uh, no, I, I, it's got an incredible amount of useful data in there, Emma. Um, very interesting. So, um, no, very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy? Oh, no, look, it's a big body of work. I accept the report was, you know, the understanding that the things that are affected by COVID-19 will be updated. So, yeah, good work, Emma. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Brothers. Yeah, it's a formidable document and um, it, it takes an awful long time to digest if you have a mind to. Uh, Emma, did you prepare this, uh, Emma? Sorry, did I prepare? It was, was it this your work? Did you prepare it? Yes. And is it a requirement... It, it, for the long-term planning process that such a report, environmental scan, be prepared? 
Uh, as I said, it's not, um, it's more of a good practice document. So it's not actually required um, by legislation. Um, however, the uh, SOLGIM, the Society of Local Government Managers, recommends that this type of exercise is done so that we do have the most up-to-date data so that we understand what is happening within the environment for the district. So how frequently would you update it or redo it? For the full long-term plan, um, this would be a once every three year type of exercise. However, we are looking at um, a particular type of um, database and software that will provide up-to-date information in a um, much more concise way um, and much less time-consuming way. Um, so that's something that we can provide on a more regular basis. So will this report and the data that's in it be available on the website? The document that I've put together will be available on our website when, if council agrees that they would like the information made available. Thank you, Emma. Councillor Kogan. Um, yeah, Emma, like great work, very extensive report um, indeed, and some really good relevant information in it. Um, the only thing that I would suggest if this was a template was that it, it, it does actually double up quite a lot when you read through it um, with the same, you know, quite a bit of the same information um, repeated. So I just wonder whether, you know, it could be broken down a little bit more into just the specific areas without, you know, it having to be then also repeated. Um, but there were interesting um, things uh, that came up through there, um, you know, that are pretty clear all the way through, you know, the rest time care and communications is a biggie. Um, uh, particularly, um, I mean, that was always a biggie, to be honest, prior to COVID. And I think that that is something that, um, as a council, we need to be looking into um, a lot more. Um, the, the strong local economy, of course, this report would have been written, obviously, prior to COVID, I know. Um, and, of course, that's going to take a hang of a lot of work um, by the coast to be able to get back a strong local economy. Um, and that's where we need to step up as a council. And um, as Bruce has been following the lead on, you know, get on board and be lobbying with government to be able to get mining and such things like that back over here so that we can build a strong economy again. Um, I think the benefits for us... Um, as far as increasing population over here, um, I would think COVID has actually taught people that um, you can actually lead much simpler lives. And uh, let's face it, where we live is a pretty awesome place. Um, but I think that there's two things that would encourage increase in population. One would be obviously uh, the economy and jobs. Um, and there's another thing that you have raised in here that I really think needs a lot more looking into is the lack of training institutions um, to be able to either upskill uh, the current people that live in our district or, of course, um, you know, to encourage people moving here where they still have that availability of those training institutions. So I think, you know, there's, it raises a lot of work within the format you've provided. Um, so thanks for that, Emma. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hart. Um, yeah, a very comprehensive document, Emma, and a huge amount of data in there. Um, I just hope, yeah, we can we can use some of the data and obviously COVID's going to have a huge impact on this, but yeah, great work. An awesome amount of time's gone into that report. So thanks, Emma. Thank you. Councillor Neil. Yes, again, thanks, Emma. Certainly a large body of work. Um, and I guess it's the next step of making sure that a lot of the information is used in planning in the future. 
um, and that it's not just shelved, but is actively used in various aspects of the council. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Paul. Um, thank you. Yeah, uh, look, a really uh, handy resource. Um, the, on page 34, the, um, uh, just one example with the details of State Highway 6 unplanned road closures greater than 10 hours south of Hokitika between 2010 and 2020, although it only goes up until uh, March last year. Um, strong winds, 20 hours, slips, 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 strong winds, surface flooding, slips, Waiho Bridge, 800 hours, flooding of 24 hours. I think it'd be useful to update that, Your Worship, to um, after, it doesn't take account of Mount Hercules, for instance. Yeah, and which would be really quite useful at this time when we're arguing for um, for relief, basically, for um, to give us a break. Uh, this is very useful information, but there's, there's um, handy information like this all the way through this document. The important thing, as Councillor Carruthers said, is to make sure it's accessible and put it on that website. And you need to get that word out there that it's that it's on the website, not just lost on the website. Um, you yeah, get the word out, Emma. Um, but a job well done. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Emma, the uh, the feeling around the table is that uh, you've done a tremendous job. It's got a lot of use, useful uh, information in it, and I'd invite uh, a councillor to. Uh, resolve that council received the content of the environmental scan attached as appendix one and instruct staff to make the final summary document attached as appendix two available on council's website and be distributed through Westland Matters, the link. Would someone uh, like to move that resolution, please? Councillor Martin and Councillor Kennedy. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion's carried. Well done on that one, Emma. And we'll move on to the next one, which is the Community Outcomes Engagement. Now, councillors, that's on pages 154 to 189. And Emma, could you uh, drive us through, please? Thank you. Uh, through the Mayor. Uh, we have had uh, a couple of workshops on this information, uh, so uh, Council will understand that this is an item that is a legislative requirement for the long-term plan to have uh, community outcomes. Um, it's particularly important um, following the, government, the changes from the government um, in 2019 to reintroduce the four well-beings. And um, that was seen as a very good opportunity to make sure that the community outcomes were robust and um, well expressed within the long-term plan. Um, so I would like to um, open the floor to queer questions from councillors through the mayor. Thanks, uh, thanks, Emma. Councillors, we'll take the the uh, reports as read. Uh, Councillor Martin, thank you for the report, Emma. Um, it's I was part of those consultation meetings. Some of them couldn't get down south in the end, but um, yeah, interesting feedback. It's I I'm interested in some of these um, the social media type responses that we got from an online engagement too, which is a different way of engaging. So I'm pleased we've we've undertaken that and um, I do support the, um, the the recommendation which is to include those as the, you know the framework within the LTP. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davidson. No, uh, it's all good, thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, thanks again Emma. Um, yeah I just that's I know it's tough just to trying to engage the community and um, whenever we're adopting, I mean, using a report like this as a reference, I suppose it's always tough um, when the sample size is probably smaller than we'd like, but good work once again. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Carruthers. Thank you, you, Your Worship. Emma, how did you feel, or how do you feel about the level of public engagement in this process? Uh, I think that the level of public engagement we 
got was quite good. Um, some people are very interested in these kinds of things and what is happening in their community and how council works in the community. Other people have less interest. Um, we certainly got some quite high interest, um, particularly down in Haast and uh, up in Kumara. Um, the, it, there was less interest maybe in the, um, in the sort of slightly larger centres, but people were, were also given the opportunity to comment online. So they may have been that people had done that rather than come to attend a face-to-face -face meeting. Because when, when the level of engagement from the public is low, it's hard to know how representative this is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kogan. Uh, no, Emma, look, I'm well aware um, of the time you and Sarah took to actually go, go around the various places as well, which is great um, to be able to be face-to-face um, -face with a lot of our constituents. Um, I really enjoyed um, on where you've done from page 187 to 189, and you've actually done a breakdown of each area and some of the uh, suggestions that were actually coming through from those areas. Um, how, how do you intend, how, how does that actually get formed into a document that um, the constituents will know will be followed through, you know, with their concerns. Because I think that's a confidence thing for them too, knowing that the time and energy that they've taken to feed that information to you, you know, has been acknowledged and where possible, we've been able to make improvements. Um, part of this will be the levels of service that the different departments will be providing. So when we are working through those long-term plan um, analysis of what each area is working on, um, they will be able to take into account the particular questions that people have asked, the particular services that people have been asking for. Um, as to the actual community outcomes themselves, those will also be incorporated within that documentation and within the long-term plan as a section um, and then annual plan as well for reporting on. Okay, so does it become an action list? Um, I couldn't actually comment on that specifically. That may be something that Simon or Leslie might have more insight into in that respect. Uh, yeah. We'll have to re review that, um, Councillor Kogan. We'll, um, we'll talk more specifically through the long-term plan workshops on this one. Yep, because there's a, the only reason I'm saying it is because when you read through it, yeah, some people have put some good thought yeah. into a lot of um, that information, and that's what we're about is listening to all those, also those needs of the community. Mm. Thank you. Councillor Hart. Um, no, thanks, Emma. Another huge body of work that you and your team have undertaken. So, yeah, no, thanks for that. Councillor Neil. Um, yes, thank you, Emma. Um, it is very hard getting people along to meetings like that. Um, so, well done on that. And I, Hear what you're saying, David, Councillor Carruthers, um, regarding sometimes the low numbers. It can also be a sign of satisfaction or a sign of not really caring too strongly either way. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very hard to um, know where to put the emphasis on the numbers that do attend and do comment, I think. Yeah, thank you. And Paul. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The um, yeah, it's the level of engagement is, uh, I think, is the, is uh, relevant. Um, you know, there's lots of comments there of, um, from um, from Hokitika and um, district wide and around the glaciers and etc. But um, Ross and Kamara and Watara have got like two comments each, um, which is um, yeah, which is just a pity. 
Well, councillors, uh, once again, Emma, I think uh, the feeling is you've done a you've done an outstanding job there. Um, the four well-beings for our council is a very important part of of how we run our council, and uh, it's very very well supported around our table. Look, I'd, I'd like to invite a councillor to to move uh, the following: that a council receive the report and the appendices, appendices. B, that council adopts the community outcomes and related strategies outlined in appendix two. C, council directs staff to refer to these community outcomes and associated strategies when delivering the long-term plan 2021 to 31 and include them within the plan. And D, that council makes publicly available on Western District Council's website, the results of the community engagement exercise. I'd invite a councillor to uh, move um, this resolution. Sorry if I may, Your Worship. Um, I just, and, and this is not a knock on the work you've done, Emma, but recommend, recommendation C, um, I'm just unconvinced that due to the sample size that it's, um, an accurate reference to um, for the long-term plan, but that's just my opinion. Thank you for that, Councillor Kendi. It's it, it's relevant. Well, your opinion certainly relevant. Um, you're going to have to feed your dog. <laughs> and D that uh, council makes publicly available on Westland District Council's website. The results of the community engagement exercise. Someone like to move the resolution, please. Mm -hmm. Councillor Cogan, do I have a second? Yep. Councillor Martin, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Thank you, councillors. Uh, we're at the end of the uh, normal part of the meeting, but before we go, um, I wonder if uh, Councillor Kennedy could give us an update on that magnificent shield in behind you there. What's the story? Oh, this is the uh, George Woodham Shield. It's beautiful. Uh, played for uh, between Ross, Harry, Harry, Wadera, and Franz Fox Haas. Hopefully, we can uh, have a challenge series this year. And um, currently, Wadera are the holders of this magnificent shield. And you've been known to take the field yourself. Ah, yes, I have played one or two games of Wooden Shield. Yes. Look, thank you so much for that. Look, uh, we'll, we'll now move into uh, to confidential, and, and, and I'd invite a councillor to move us into confidential and uh, seek a seconder as well. Councillor Neil, yeah. have a seconder. Councillor Davidson, those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'd ask uh, Diane to now disconnect us from live streaming. Two minute break it is, absolutely. If you'd like to mute your uh, screens, councillors, just mute your, 